In just a few hours here, the San Diego City Council will consider who they want to be on the new Citizens Police Review Board. Thanks for being here at 6 a.m. I'm Eric Connor. And I'm Dana Marie McNichol filling in for Netta Arampour. Now, the board will continue to weigh in on alleged officer misconduct and suggest disciplinary actions. CBS 8's Chris Grow live at the San Diego Police Headquarters to give us an update on the council's next step to form a commission. Chris? Yeah, good morning, Eric and Dana Marie and the council set to meet in less than four hours now, 10 a.m. That's when they will take up this scheduled item again, trying to actually put members on this commission. Now they have a list of about 63 people and they're going to whittle that down to 25. And what they're trying to do, though, is also get a wide uh, wide range of people trying to make sure uh, that they include those with low to moderate incomes, young people as well as one person from each council district. So they're going to try to go ahead and fulfill those needs. But the issue that some people have had with this process is how long it's taken to get here. The creation of the Independent Police Practices Commission actually happened after voters approved Measure B in November of 2020. But fast forward today and we're still looking for members to be voted on. And it's not just the delay upsetting those close to the measure and the creation of the commission. It's actually how the current review board is doing. That board has had to stop reviewing less severe police complaints because there's a backlog of cases and not enough commissioners to go through them. Police have had to close internal cases without outside input. And the point of this new police practices commission was to enhance and improve what the old board was doing to give them more powers to give them more oversight. Now the co chair founder of San Diegans for Justice and the author of the measure uh, measure B Andrea St. Julian says the process needs to pick up while Council President Sean Ela Rivera has defended that process. I think we will see a variety of different conversations for different nominees and different seats. Your you know, guess as to exactly what Monday looks like wouldn't be too much different than mine. I, I, I think what cannot be forgotten here is that this is an entirely new process. And despite the city council's clear efforts to slow down this process, we are all going to work together to make sure that this commission is what it needs to be. And we're going to continue to follow what happens today. Remember meeting at 10 a.m. If and when we do learn on who will sit on this commission, we'll be sure to pass along that info both here and on CBS8.com. Eric and Dana Marie. All right, thanks, Chris, for that. This morning we have more information on a shooting that killed at least 10 people after a racing event near Ensenada, Mexico. Authorities say it was a fight between rival gangs. Saturday shooting also injured nine other people. According to report, 911 calls were made. People with guns got out of a black van and started shooting at people at a gas station. Some of them fired back. So far, no one has been arrested. And right now, people in Borrego Springs are being warned about a sexually violent predator being moved to the area. A judge ordered Douglas Badger be released on or before May 23rd. Now that's tomorrow. Badger will be housed in a residential neighborhood and will be supervised by state authorities. This comes despite community opposition. Local state lawmaker Brian Jones is expected to request an audit on the company that oversaw Badger's placement. Well, this morning, the man is in custody accused of groping a 12 year old girl in Santee. It happened Thursday afternoon near Big Rock Park. 30 say 29 year old Jose Rubalcaba groped the girl before he rode away on an electric scooter. He was arrested over the weekend and is facing a felony charge. He is expected to be in court on Wednesday. Right now, police are looking for a group of men. The carjacked an Uber driver at gunpoint. It happened in the East Village near 10th Avenue and C Street early Saturday morning. Police say a group of four thieves ran up to the car with a gun and took wallets, phones, and then the car. Officers found the car empty a few blocks away. The passengers and the driver were not hurt. And this morning, the protest against a 30-foot border wall at Friendship Park is headed to our nation's capital. Today, a delegation from the group called French Friends of Friendship Park is leaving to Washington, D.C. to speak with lawmakers. CBS Jasmine Ramirez has the story. Activists and community members gathered at Borderfield State Park. They marched to protest the construction of the 30-foot border wall at Friendship Park. This demonstration was different than many we've seen in the past. Today there was music and dancing. We know that what we do today, it has meaning 
it has profound unity and compassion and humanity to keep fighting to save Friendship Park. For years, families from both sides of the border have reunited at the park. It has also served as a place for religious and music groups to celebrate the region's culture. Now, border wall construction threatens the park's purpose. Customs and Border Protection say the primary and secondary barrier has been deteriorating and poses a threat to Border Patrol. Therefore, wall replacement is needed. The secondary border wall is the first project that's moving forward. It's probably about 100 feet from completion of, of the top of the Mesa, the Monument Mesa. Construction on the primary border wall hasn't started yet. Activists are hopeful their demonstrations and visit to Washington, D.C. will prevent it from happening. So that's why we're hoping that with these protests that the decision makers will hear us and say they, it makes sense to not have 30-foot border walls at Friendship Park. They plan to speak to members of Congress and White House officials on Tuesday morning. We will bring back what they say and we will challenge and continue the fight to save Friendship Park. Thank you. And Friends of Friendship Park is also asking for the community's help in signing letters to elected officials about the border wall construction. You can find more information on CBS8.com. Jasmine Ramirez, CBS8. And thanks, Jasmine. Right now, migrant encounters are down 70% at the border after Title 42 ended. That's according to the Department of Homeland Security. Border Patrol is averaging about 3,000 encounters a day. More than 11,000 people have been deported since May 12th. Officials had predicted a crush of migrants would arrive at the border after Title 42 expired, but so far that's just not the case. A local immigration advocate says it may be due to new consequences. Migrants caught crossing illegally are not allowed to return for five years. This is coming in here. MTS says South Bay, East County and minibus services continue to be impacted by a work stoppage. MTS just updated the routes affected today. East County has about 90% coverage, but MTS says the South Bay is much more limited. This is just for buses, trolley service is normal. You can see the full list of routes impacted at SDMTS.com. Contracted employees driving for MTS have been on strike, demanding better working conditions. The dispute is between about 400 bus drivers and third-party staffing company Transdev. This morning, the intersection at Scripps Lake Drive and Scripps Ranch Boulevard is still closed. A water main break caused a sinkhole to open up in the area on Friday, leaving behind this big mess. Quite the river that they had there. The city of San Diego says it is still trying to figure out what caused the water main break. It also hasn't given any estimates as to when that intersection will be open. And we've been seeing some uh, rain, some mist around the county here. That's right. We are starting off the morning with uh, dense cloud cover along the coast, stretching all the way through your inland valleys. In some cases, those clouds have been capable of producing some mist, some light drizzle out there. So there's the chance that you might not only see some damp roads, but also need the windshield wipers at times. Some fog, too, which we'll look at in just a second. But I figured I'd start off the forecast with this. This gorgeous shot of the sunrise out there from Otai Mountain. So 5 46 or so was that sunrise. We're still more than 20 minutes out from it. The problem that we have on hand is that most of us are below all of these clouds. So all of these beautiful mountain views really only being seen from the mountaintops because below those mountaintops, you've got that dense layer of clouds that we are going to be working through. Two and a half miles of visibility uh, in Ramona, three up in Fallbrook. Perfect 10 for Miramar and Kearney Mesa, 7 in San Diego, and 9 down south in Imperial Beach. So some issues related to visibility, and we'll see those clouds pull back steadily throughout the late morning, early afternoon. Mid-70s come about for the inland valleys across the deserts of well, mountains and deserts in particular, a final day with that opportunity for a few thunderstorms. It's been an issue that has mainly plagued your mountaintops, and that's been the last several days. Palomar Mountain, Pine Valley, spots that have seen a little bit of moisture pop up very briefly, but still mentionable. Along the coast, it's going to be minimal clearing for us. 67 is the forecast high along the coast. Uh, we may get maybe a few small bouts of sunshine out there, but that's really all we can hold out hope for. Here's a look at current temperatures as you head across the southwestern U.S. 53 right now in San Luis Obispo, 57 in Santa Barbara, and 61 for L.A. and for San Diego right now. Let's take a look at your border wait times as we start off the morning. It is 610 on the clock, and according to the CBP website, the uh, general line 
at the San Ysidro Port of Entry. 125 minutes, over two hours you're going to be waiting in that line. Otay Mesa Port of Entry, 45 minutes, so you'll at least be able to get through quite a bit faster, but we do know that sometimes those wait times can vary and tend to be a little longer depending on how long it takes for you to get to that start time itself. Uh, Dana Marie and Eric, back to you.